And there's a few basic things you'll need. You'll need some sort of Xerox print. So this does need to be carbon based. It cannot be inkjet. So whether it comes from a laser printer or a big copy machine, you're gonna need something to burnish with. This is an intaglio burnisher printmaking tool. Very, very useful. If you find you're going to do a lot of transfers, it's a good $10 investment. You'll need a spray bottle with water and some paper towel. My panel's still a little warm. You want your surface of your wax to be somewhat recently fused to do the transfer. You don't necessarily want it hot. If it's a hot surface, when I'm going to burnish, what will end up happening is that I will actually end up embedding the paper into the surface of the wax. And we don't want to do that. We just want to create enough friction and have enough stickiness to the surface of the wax to grab that carbon. Okay, I've let that cool down a little bit. It's still feeling ever so slightly warm and there's still definitely tackiness to the surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself a couple of paper towel here and start in. So you'll notice I didn't trim all the way to the edge of the image. I want to give myself a little bit of space for my tool to be able to burnish on the back without skipping onto the wax surface. That's going to keep my tool clean and it's going to allow me to be able to burnish and have good traction there. So I'm going to go ahead and place my image transfer. And I'm going to give a light burnishing to the back of it just to make sure it's good and placed. This is another reason why you don't necessarily want warm wax, is you can actually end up displacing the wax as you're burnishing. I'm going to come in here with my paper towel now and get it fairly saturated, just plain tap water. And so these are the points at which a transfer may not work. Either your surface will have not been recently enough fused and there won't be enough stickiness to the surface and enough tack to grab on, or you may end up getting the transfer too wet too quickly. So I want to apply a little bit of water here. So I'm just going to lightly brush that water on the back of the paper. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to burnish. making sure to hit all the various areas. And then I'm going to come in here a little more water. Maybe switch direction here so I make sure that I get everything. Third swipe of water. By about the third or fourth, fourth pass, you should start to see the image coming through the back of the paper. If the paper starts to break apart on you a little bit, you know you still have a good bit of burnishing to do. I can always put down a piece of parchment and burnish on top of the parchment to protect the paper a little bit. You can see how wet the paper is at this point. If you start to see the paper be this wet after a about the second pass, you've probably gone in with too much water too quickly, and your image transfer may not work at that point. I can see my papers breaking apart a little bit. And I do think I want, to I want to burnish on top of some parchment just to be able to get a little more burnishing in um, without breaking the paper up too much. So I've just got a piece of parchment here and now I'm going to be able to give it a good burnish without worrying about breaking apart that image. go ahead and go one more, adding a good bit of water at this point so that the paper can start to break apart and come off of there. Okay. 
So at this point, this is getting pretty close to done. So I'm going to spritz a little water on the back. This last pass is the only time I generally will spray water directly on the surface. And then I'll start to use the burnishing tool to get that broken apart. And a little more water. And I think I'm ready to start getting that paper off of there. And then, so I'm just using my fingertip in kind of a circular motion. To start to work that paper back. Wipe it back a little. And then I'll give a feel and see if I think there's any more paper to come off of there. The more paper you can get off of there, the better. You're going to get a smoother surface when you go to use this in. But sometimes if you did not have enough um, burnishing, your image may start to break apart a little bit. So at that point, just let it be and don't necessarily try to work all the paper off of there. It's better to leave a little bit of paper behind than to lose your transfer. So I'm just going to go ahead, dry this up with some paper towel. I want to let this sit and dry for a few moments before I fuse it in. I don't want to fuse in any moisture into the surface. There is some moisture left in that, that carbon. And so sometimes it'll leave little tiny pock marks if you try to fuse wet material into the surface of the wax. So it only needs about a minute to dry up. If you've got any paper left behind, you'll start to see a white haze come to the surface and that's that paper pulp just drying up and so that will go away when we go to fuse this in but if you did a good job getting all the paper off of there you may not actually see any difference notice my transfer while we're waiting for this to dry we'll talk about what's going to work best for a transfer notice this is a really high contrast image i've got dark to light to dark to light the higher contrast your image is the better transfer you are going to get. Things like line drawings tend to transfer really well, whereas something that might be a photograph that may have a lot of mid-tones to it, a lot of gray, sometimes those get a little muddy looking when they transfer. So you may have to play around with some of your image editing software to be able to adjust those things to get a really nice clean transfer. So this feels like it's good and dry. So now I'm gonna come in here and lightly fuse it in. So that's gonna allow the wax that's underneath it to kind of soak into that carbon and make sure that it's good and locked into the surface. I'm not gonna stay in any one area for too long. I don't wanna end up breaking my transfer apart, so I'd rather keep the heat gun moving and make multiple passes. There you go. That should be sufficient to either then continue to paint on top of or hand color with some other materials or just let it be your, your last element to your piece.